Today is going to be a getting from point A to point B guide on digital fashion renders. In my opinion, this is one of the most fun workflows and niches within 3D. I've seen amazing videos from Anton Tudisco, 3Seater, and Aiden Edits. I feel like there's a growing high ticket demand for this sort of niche 3D content. Now, some very important information before we start. We're going to be using Marvelous Designer to create our clothing and simulate it. Everything else, we're going to be using Blender. Marvelous Designer is a paid software, but in terms of value, you're getting a lot. There's a giant marketplace of free assets, literally everything you need to get started. I'm not going to teach you how to make garments from scratch in this tutorial. There's tons of content out there showing you how to make every sort of thing from scratch. So instead, I'm going to focus just teaching you the workflow. I think that learning this way will allow you to dip your toes in the water. You'll be able to alter garments, get some basic knowledge of how everything works. And then from there, you can build upon it and you can branch out and create your own custom outfits if you'd like. Now, the last two things I want to mention that can help you with this. I have an update plan for Director 3D, my Blender plugin. Director 3D is my plugin built for music video creators. You get effects, templates, and more. If you already own Director 3D, you guys are getting a giant content pack, adding a bunch of new features and presets all for free. I also have a new Patreon if you'd like to support the content on this channel. I'm going to have the Blender project file from this tutorial up on there, as well as a bunch of other digital assets which you guys can download. So with all that said, let's hop in and get started. All right, guys, so the first step is to design a 3D character for your clothes. Now, this is optional. If you want, you can just have the clothes animated or a basic mannequin or default avatar to show them off. If you do want to design your own character to wear these clothes, I've made tons of tutorials on making your own 3D character in different styles, with with different softwares. I'm going to link those videos down below if you want to start there. I'm going to make Yeet. I think the puffer jacket and face mask is just a clean look. It'll work perfect for this. So let me show you my method for doing this. My go-to method for 3D characters is using face gen and Daz. Again, I have full step-by-step -step tutorials for this. Essentially, you just load in a picture of someone to face gen and then face gen will export the facial morph and 3D textures of that person to Daz. Daz is a free 3D software. It's great for making 3D characters. I can use Daz to select a body preset. I can crank up this custom face slider for the shape of Yeet's face, and then I can export this over to Blender, which we can use for any general 3D touch up and rendering later on. So in Blender, I'm going to import in my avatar from Daz. I'm doing that with the Daz to Blender bridge, by the way, very easy to set up. I'm going to swap in the face texture that I generated from face gen. We only really need like one eighth of his face because the rest is covered by a mask. So right now I'm just going down the list of the Genesis 8 textures you can see on the right. And I'm just swapping in all of the diffuse base color textures from face gen instead. If you want, you can clean up any of these textures in Photoshop. I'm just going to use the clone stamp and the smear tool just to kind of patch up the spots that are a little bit distorted, like the lip, for example. I'm also going to use the dodge brush just to kind of remove some of these dark shadows on the face. If you are using face gen, this may be due to the picture that you used as an input. Once you've made your adjustments, just export this back out as a PNG. I'm going to name it custom face texture and then load that back into the base color in Blender to see your changes. So yeah, keep in mind that you can use Photoshop to fix things here. You can also use it to add things like tattoos, for example, if you want. So this is good for now. Now, another optional step. This is where you can decide if you want an animation or a pose on your character. So you can choose a pose from Daz if you want, or you can pose your character in Blender. It's all up to you. I'm going to show you how to actually add an animation. And in my case, we're going to add this walking animation that I showed you at the beginning. So I'm going to start off by deleting the Daz rig on our character. I'm going to select my character and I'm going to export it as an FBX file. Once I've done that, I'm going to go to mixmode.com. I can upload my avatar FBX and I can follow the prompts to auto rig it with a Mixmo rig. Now, once you've done that, you can add in any animation from the Mixmo library. I'm going to go with this simple walking animation. I can click to export the animated FBX and then I can import that FBX back into Blender. Now, from here, a lot of people freak out and say, where are all my textures on my new FBX? Well, it's very simple. If you want, you can go through the process of packaging it. But I like to just go over to the materials over here on the right. You see everything is still named the exact same. So all you have to do is just click this little drop down and just click the corresponding name for that map. So you see it's dot one with nothing. Just click face and it'll load on. So just go through here clicking all these drop downs and just loading on your maps. So two last steps before we create our clothing, we're going to select the rig here and we want to offset the keyframe animation about 25 frames. So now we're going to drag to the beginning here. We're going to select the armature. 
we're going to change in the top left to pose mode and then click a just to select all the parts of the armature we're going to go up to pose we're going to go over to clear transform and we're going to select all so that should set a keyframe here again auto keyframe should help with that so you should have a keyframe where everything starts in the normal a pose and then it should slowly transition into the animation so this is what you want going into marvelous designer we have this nice a pose which will be a lot easier when it comes to fitting the garments to the actual body as opposed to trying to fit it on something like this so a pose into animation and then the last optional step before we add our clothes is adding in shoes. You want to add the shoes in before you simulate the clothes to prevent clipping of the pants with the shoes. I actually made this mistake when I did my original example I showed earlier. So here's how to set this up properly. You need to find or make your shoe model. I'm going to download these from Sketchfab. I'll import them into Blender and then I'll just line the shoe up with the foot. We can click Shift D to duplicate the shoe. And if you want to flip the shoe so it fits the other foot, just go to the scale values and add a negative before every scale value. Next, we need to find our Mixamo rig in our object menu up here. And we're going to expand it until we find the left foot bone. We're going to select the shoe. Then we're going to control click the left foot bone so that they're both selected and then click control P. We're going to parent it to the bone. And now as we play, you'll see the shoe is parented to the bone and it's moving with the foot. So repeat that with the other shoe and the other foot bone. And now both of our shoes are connected. We'll use that little parenting trick later on when we want to add glasses or any other accessories to the character after Marvelous Designer. Now we're ready to export and create our clothing. So we're going to select all of the necessary parts. I'm going to go up to file and export as Alembic. Just make sure you set your frame range here and check on only selected objects for the export. Once you've done that, we're going to open up Marvelous Designer, go to File, Import, and we're going to import in that Alembic file. Again, you should have your shoes already added if you want to. I'm not showing it in this footage, but it is recommended. So here's the basics of how Marvelous Designer works. On the left, you're going to have your little 3D viewport, and on the right, you're going to have your Garment Designer, your 2D pattern window. So you can use any of these tools to create any sort of pattern. So I can click this polygon tool and just create a square. And this is going to create that fabric. So now what I can do is just place this over top like this. And now you can click either spacebar or this button right here to actually simulate this into cloth. So you have this nice real time control of the cloth. You can click and drag it to help fit the garment better. It is one of the more fun workflows, I would say. But either way, let me show you how we can import in our market assets. You guys can watch any tutorial you want to create your own custom garments if you'd like. So to do that, you want to go up to File, and we're going to go to Add, and you can select either Project or Garment. So I went on the Marketplace and I downloaded a ton of different assets. I organized them into their own folders here. So let's start with a jacket and we're going to add in a puffer jacket. Now keep in mind, whenever you download these, they're either going to be project files or garment files. So if you're not seeing everything, make sure you switch here. And of course, make sure these are all unzipped so you can actually see the projects. So I'll go with the connect official block MV2 puffer and we'll click open. So here's what that looks like. As you can see, because we have everything set in our A pose position, it's matching up really well. So that's the importance of having your starting character in either an A pose or a T pose. You may want to check with the garment before this was made for an A pose. This will work fine. Here's all the patterns. We can organize these over here. What we're going to do is just select this and try and fit this a little bit better. And then we'll click play to actually simulate this cloth. And then we can just drag this down so that it's not clipping on the head. And there we go. We have our jacket, everything nice and easily loaded in. Next, we're going to load in something a bit trickier, the pants. So let's go to file, add again. We'll go to project. I'm going to go over to the pants folder I have saved, and I'm going to load in the men's skill wind workwear medium length. So make sure we're selecting add and not open. We'll click OK. Now you can see it's going to be a bit trickier to actually fit this onto our avatar because the legs and everything aren't properly lining up. So let's select every part of the pants. I'm going to lower and try and find the perfect spot for the waistline. And what we're going to do is we're going to move these parts so that it'll latch onto the legs and fit a lot better. Now, it may be a bit tricky with all of these extra accessories. So maybe if you want to try, if you're running into issues, you can try with just normal pants. But with the way that this is laid out, it should be pretty easy to get this working. So we're just going to select all of the parts on the left like this. 
I'm going to take them and move them over here. And now you can see all of the sewing lines that are being created. So whenever we click play and simulate the garment, it's going to connect to all of these seams that are sewn together. So we're just giving it a little bit of room to work with. And we can do that with the back part here. We're just going to move it over so that it's not clipping any parts of the leg like this. So now we'll do the same with the left leg. We'll select here. I'm just going to move it over like this. There are also more auto fitting options in the newer versions of Marvelous Designer. I don't know what version you're using, but this should still fix a lot of your issues. Now we're going to select back part of the pants. Again, making sure that none of these seams are intersecting with the model so that it'll all snap together seamlessly. So that looks good to me. We've spaced everything out a bit more. I don't see many of these seam lines intersecting. And if they do, we can go in and fix them. So let's go ahead and click space to simulate this and watch it sew together. All right, so that looks pretty good. There's no jittering. I'm not seeing a lot of intersecting going on. So if you are running into some intersecting issues with any parts, like for example, the jacket and the pants, what you can do is actually use a layering system. So I can select all the parts of the jacket. I can scroll over here on the right and I can find under simulation properties, this layer. If we bump this up to one, it's going to tell Marvelous Designer that this should be above this layer and it should prevent any of the intersections. So this looks fine. Again, this is the hardest part, just making sure everything fits. As long as you keep things simple, everything should run smooth. So now let's talk about how we can alter some of these garments. So for example, maybe you don't like these sleeves being so long. You can just select the part that you'd like to fix. All of these are already linked together because we downloaded a marketplace asset. We can grab this tool here, the edit pattern tool. We can just select the bottom parts of the sleeve. We can click and we can just move them up to kind of shorten the length of the pattern like that. So you see, this is the previous sew line. This is the adjustment we made. Whenever I click play, it's going to adjust this and shorten the sleeve. So there we go, we adjusted the length of our garment. And with that, it should allow you to start getting the hang of just adjusting some of these patterns so that when you do go in and start creating your own garments, you'll have some already made knowledge going into it. Now what we're gonna do is start adding our materials and our fabric. So we can click over here in the top left to the fabric section. And the cool thing about fabric is depending on the fabric that you use, it's going to change the simulation properties. So you can look up the actual fabric used in these garments. I'm gonna go with something like polyester for the jacket. So if you select all these parts, you're going to see the fabric highlighted that it's currently using. So we can just drag our new custom fabric over top here to replace it. And now from here, we can select this new fabric. We can scroll down in the property editor. You're going to see your texture, your normal map here, as well as your color. So let's go ahead and choose our color and you can change this later on in Blender if you'd like. You can also test your reflection. So you have your roughness down here, your map intensity. I'm just going to bump up the map intensity to add some reflectivity. And again, we're going to alter all this in Blender. So you can just do this as sort of a preview. And then you can do the same with the pants or any other part of the garment. It's up to you. I'm going to go in here and add a mask. And this is probably one of the easier things you can make. So if you're a beginner making a mask from scratch, I'd highly recommend it. I'll link a tutorial down below. It'll give you a basic understanding of sewing, creating your garment from scratch. But just for time's sake, I'm going to just import a mask that I already have. So I'll go to import garment and I'll load in this ski mask. So I'm going to position this over the face like this. I'll simulate to let that latch on. All right, so let's go over to the face mask garment over here on the right. We'll space this out to give it some space. We can adjust the garment as well. So for example, if you want to adjust the actual face hole, you can again just grab the edit pattern tool. We can just drag down like this. And when we click play, re -sew that together. So actually changing the measurements of the garment is a good way to better fit. You see there's still a little bit of space in between the actual mask and the face. So let's go back, select the mask. We're going to come down to the simulation properties and we can talk about some useful ones here. So first of all, particle distance, the more you push this up, the less realistic the simulation will be, but it will render faster. So if you're having trouble simulating things at a fast speed, you can try and bump that up to offset that. Shrinkage, weft, and warp. This is essentially essentially just your width and your height, how much you are stretching those out to give more room to make things more baggy or more tight. Additional thickness, this is going to add with collision. So this is the distance between what it is colliding with. What I'm going to do is actually not use any of these. You can mess around with those if you want. I'm going to instead use the elastic value up here under selected line. So I'll check that on. 
And this is great just for adding some sort of tight stretching onto the face like in the mask sense here. Once we check that on, you're going to see everything start to stretch together and it's going to sort of hug the face a little bit better. Now you can also play with the strength here. 10 may be a little bit too intense. So let's go with something maybe like five. We'll go halfway. All right, and that looks good to me. So I'm gonna finish this off by just adding a color to the mask right here. So we'll select the ski mask fabric and I'll just choose a base color like this. Again, it's not great to rely on this, but if you are starting from scratch, I found it a lot easier to start by doing this and actually getting a final product out of the software as opposed to trying to learn everything from scratch, running into issues, and ultimately just giving up because you can't get it to work. So try it out this way, make a cool outfit, get the whole process down. Once you have that, you can go into your other tutorials, you can learn how to make what it is you want to make, You'll be able to stitch things together, make your custom garments. And from there, there's no stopping what you can do with this. So finally, what we need to do, we need to simulate our clothing. So in the top right, we're going to change from the simulation section to the animation section. Again, we set up that animation earlier. For some reason, if you don't go to this window a lot, it's just going to remove your animation. So you can bring that back in by going to file, import Alembic. So we'll bring back the same Alembic file. Again, same settings. So now we have in the animation editor, our Genesis 8 Mixmo animation. This is what it should look like, just walking forward. All we have to do from here is just click this little record button. This is going to simulate the clothing. So I'll let you guys go ahead and run through that process. Once you're finished, we'll talk about exporting this out of Marvelous Designer and importing it back into Blender. All right, guys, so once your cloth simulation is all finished, here's how we can bring this back into Blender. What we want to do is we can select the avatar here. We don't need to re-import this. Just select it and click Shift A. Now we only have the garments, so we're gonna go up to File. We're gonna go down to Export, and we're gonna select down here under Animation, MD Cache Standard. So this will export this as an OBJ object as well as with our animation cache. For the render settings, just change the scale to meters. And then for the axis here, just set the second one to Z up, and then click OK. So let's just hop back into Blender. Once you're in Blender, we're gonna go up to File, Import, and we're gonna import in an OBJ file. So for your import settings here, just copy what I have right here. Also very important, open up Geometry, and you wanna click on Keep Vert Order. Then we can import the OBJ. So let's select the OBJ. We're gonna go over to the Modifier section here, and we're going to add in a Mesh Cache modifier. So let's click open and we can add in our .mdd file that we exported. This is all of the simulation cache. Go ahead and click accept. So now it should be walking. We need to fix the axis mapping. Just go and set this to forward plus Z and up minus Y. Now everything should be oriented correctly. If for any reason you moved your 3D character over, like I did for example, just go to the object properties for your character. You can see my X location here is 206. I'm just gonna copy that value and then I'm gonna select the clothing and paste in that value so that it's perfectly matching up with our character. And there we go. Now we have our clothing simulated on our 3D character. If you guys want to, you can offset the animation to cut out the A pose section, or you guys can just trim the timeline so that it doesn't render that out specifically. So now let's fix our materials. We're going to change in the top right to the rendered shading view. We'll select the clothing and we'll switch over to the shader editor workspace. So all we really need is the normal maps here. You guys can go ahead and just delete the image texture that's in the base color for all of these and just add in your own custom color if you'd like. Now you can mess around with the roughness and the specular values to get the right amount of reflection for the clothing. And again, your normal maps should all be imported in from Marvelous Designer. So if you zoom in, you're still gonna see that nice realistic detail. So we'll just go down and repeat those steps for all of the other clothes. I'm just going to, again, remove the base color map. I'll choose my own custom colors and I'll tweak the roughness and the specular. Now I'm also going to grab a pair of sunglasses from Sketchfab again, and then import that into Blender. I'm gonna use the same trick we did with the shoes where I align the glasses, I find the head bone, click the glasses first, then control click the head bone, click control P and parent them together. And then last but not least, we need to light and finalize our render. For the simple lighting setup that I have here, I use my Director 3D plugin, the Light Studio section. Of course, it's not required to have my plugin. It's very simple to make a cyclorama object like we have here. And then I can add in my own lighting presets and control the lights all from here. So I'm going to add this little three-point lighting setup. I'll create a new camera, position everything how I want. 
Once you have everything all ready to go, let's talk about some of the most optimized render settings. If you want the best results, I recommend rendering with cycles. You guys can mess around with your sample count as well as the denoising section. It depends on if you're going for a still image render or an animation. Also a big one here, if you really want to retain the details in the clothing, I recommend you render at 4K resolution or higher. Here's a comparison of a 1080p render versus a 4K render. The 4K render really shows those details. For my render, I turned off denoising completely. You guys can mess around with that. Again, it depends on animation versus still image. And that's about it, guys. Like I said, extremely fun project. I definitely want to build onto this in the future, showing you guys more things that you can do with this workflow. It is a ton of fun doing something like this. I think that having the 3D simulation with the clothing really brings these characters to life. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for supporting, and I'll see you guys in the next one.